Man, I got so many emotions for this, but I'm going to keep it simple. Um, um, I think it's a win-win. <laughs> Obviously, it's a win-win, I mean, for both teams. I mean, for Brooklyn, if you can get a guy like James Harden, I mean, I'm not going to take away from what uh, he's been able to do. Um, I'm still, even when Kyrie comes back, if they figure that out, I'm interested to see three guys that are ball dominant um, really work. We talk about a big three, um, mm-hmm. but three guys in the prime of their career to ask, you know, you can actually ask guys to you know, actually sacrifice. It'll be interesting to see if they're able to do it. Um, but on paper, they look good. I mean, when you add, you know, arguably three of the top 20 guys in the league on the same team, I mean, you got to have nothing but championship aspirations. I think also, too, with them, they got to make this a um, – a multi-year thing. If it doesn't work this year, if you somehow get beat, um, you can't just break the team up and say it didn't work. Because if you think about when the Miami Heat joined, the first year they lost um, Mm -hmm. in the finals. So you got to take time to put the pieces around them. I don't know with this COVID and all this stuff going on, they're going to be able to, you know, put the right team to be a championship team. So that remains to be seen. But Brooklyn did win. They got, you know, you to add a guy like that um, in the prime of his career is unbelievable. Um, just to kind of piggyback what Perk talked about with Houston, I think it's great. I think it's great for Victor Oladipo. I think Indiana was starting to move away from him. If you started to watch Indiana games, they were starting to go with their other core. TJ Warren, those guys made a good run. So they were starting to go in a different direction. And now you go back to more of a traditional lineup. If you look at Houston's lineup right now, you got John Wall, a real point guard, Victor Oladipo, a legit two, uh, PJ right. Tucker, Christian Woods. Eric Gordon, you got more of a traditional lineup. And I'm happy for Silas. You know, you mm-hmm. got to th- see how you can, we sometimes we forget about the coaches in this situation. You know, first time this black coach has got an opportunity to coach a team, 19 years of being an assistant, and now he gets a clean locker room. He gets to put his stamp on it. You know, with so many things he could not do, um, you know, just waiting on James and trying to do everything to, to fit him. Now he gets a chance to put his stamp on the team. So I think both teams, um, Made the right move. Houston did a good thing. They weren't going to well with James Harden. They tried. They shot their wild with him. They gave him seven years. Gave him different multiple players to give him a chance to see if he could bring a championship. He wasn't capable of doing it. So we'll see how it goes. But it's a good trade for both teams. Etan, how you feel about it? I mean, it's interesting. So I just I just played my son in 2K, and he was Brooklyn, and they gave me the business. I mean, so if they, if, 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 if they played like 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 the game that I just saw, I mean, it was like because he spread him out. KD was at the four. Um, what's my man, the shooter, the little white boy, Joe Harris. Uh, Joe Harris. Yeah, and he put Joe. Harris. He just stuck Joe Harris in the corner. I mean, if, if they play like that, I think they could really be dangerous. But it's going to be interesting to see, you know, how they share the ball. One of the things that I noticed from from watching Brooklyn is um, in the fourth quarter, I saw, you know, KD didn't get a whole lot of shots a couple of them games. You know what I mean? Like he wasn't getting the ball as much. And, you know, I saw Kyrie taking the majority of the shots. And, you know, when you add James Harden to that mix, you have to see how they're going to work together, how they're going to share the ball. But if they get it, if they if they work all that out, they could be dangerous. They could be really dangerous. But we got to see what's going on with Kyrie. We got to see what's, you know, a lot, a lot of, a lot of, you know, question marks going forward, but we'll see. But you know right. what? I want, it's... Go ahead. I want Go ahead. to add one point to that. I want to add one point to that. One mistake that James made that I don't think no player in the NBA should make. He passed up. I thought that he should have took that two year, $103 million extension because that wouldn't have affected anything. Like, you can't pass up that type of money on the back end, right? This, you still would have got traded. It's still You still would have been able to get traded, but you don't pass up an extension for two years, $103 million. I'm sorry. I just had to add that. No, I agree. That's what I mean. It is. But they, they, playing, they playing with different money than we was playing with. We talked about that last time. You know what I mean? So they're, they're – their cap is just different. Like the way they look at it. I mean, I, we, who's we talking about last time who passed up um, a big payday? And I and we were saying like, you know, we wouldn't do that in our day. You it was a I young mean? boy. It was a young fella. Yeah, too, it like was a guy. young cat. Who's we talking about? But they just they just John John Collins from Atlanta yep. Hawks. Yeah, yep. there we go. That's hey, who it was. <laughs> your name. It wasn't even an all star. Nothing like right. Yeah. John Collins. Turned you down wanted bam. Money. You wanted bam. But like, come on, man. Ain't yeah. nothing. To me, you know, and y'all know from playing, hell, I mean, four year 90, you might as well say that's 100. 
It's nothing that you can't do <laughs> right. that you can do with you do. <laughs> nah, You're right. You're right. Nah, you, you're 100% right. But like I said, they, they're, the salaries are, are higher. And, you know, the, the amount of money that the league is making is more. So everything is kind of inflated. Just like we would see guys from, you know, a few decades before us, they'd be saying the same thing about us like man look at all the money y'all making you know what i mean so i think it just keeps going up and up and that's that's the beauty of the sport though man i, I gotta be honest with you man i love seeing these young brothers make money but i, got- I, I, I but i i'd be nervous when they when they when they turn it down because it's such a gamble <laughs> that's what I, i'd be nervous for them <laughs> yeah, I right, yeah. Down, right and I, I for every single one of y'all i got a question since we're talking about the money with the way that Kyrie has been acting, with the way that James Harden has been acting, right? This is pissing the owners off. You hear GM talking, you hear owners talking right now about are these organizations going to hold them accountable? Here's my thing. You had guys like Larry Bird, Magic, Jordan, all these guys were getting a max of what, $3 million a year before Jordan, you know, towards the tail end of his career. Those guys wouldn't get paid much, right? So those guys paved the way for guys like ourselves to get a nice bag while we was playing. And then we withheld that and did things the right way and paved the way for guys like today to get the right bag. So my question to y'all is, is that the way that these guys are conducting themselves, are they going to affect the bag that they're getting for the next generation of kids? Nah, I don't think so. I don't think so, Donna, because I'll say it like this, though. You know, Magic and them ran their teams. Isaiah and them ran their teams. You know what I mean? Like, you hear stories about how they acted and stuff. They just didn't have no social media. Right. That was the only difference. But they had a lot of stuff going with, with, with them, too. I mean, I, I think that what, what, it, what it boils down to is, and we've been talking this since for forever. Every time we go to a negotiation meeting back when I was in the union, they, the, the, the GMs and all of them, they some punks. That's what it is. They can't tell a person that you have these rules that you got to abide by. So the whole time we in negotiations, they want us to make the rules for them. That, that's all. We're like, well, if y'all don't want to pay that, somebody just don't pay them. They're like, yeah, right. but we don't want to do that. I'm like, y'all, so, y'all can't tell y'all somebody that you don't want to pay them this much. You want to pay them this what? much. You want to be able to say, you know what? We'd love to pay you, but the rules say that we can only pay this much. They some punks. Well, I think, <laughs> I think if you really look at it, I it gets even deeper than that, Perk. I think you got to go back to David Stern and what he said. He made the league global. Mm-hmm. So by him making the league, league global, I mean, the money's got astronomical and all those guys helped pave the way. Well, if you really think about it, the money right, the money part is probably going to stay the same because I really thought once COVID hit and them going into negotiation, I thought the owners was going to really stand their ground. Mm-hmm. And they really didn't. They just signed, they just signed the same deal again. So that means the money's good. That means that both sides are eating really, really good. So the league is only once this cold, once this pandemic is over, we're going to get back to normal. Sponsorships going to pick back up. So I think that's going to stay the same. I just think every team is different. Perk, you know this. You play, I play for the Miami Heat. Pose know this. There were league rules and there were Heat rules, and that's how you know. And every team don't run their team like that. Right. And right. that's where it comes down to. You know, Brooklyn. This is Sean Marks' first time, and you would think from Popovich. He would have learned, but you got to have your team rules too. Like mm-hmm. I love Kyrie. I'm not with players getting fined, but I'll be fine the shit out of them. That's not fair to the guys <laughs> in the locker room. Y'all know how this, this go, man. Everybody's on the same page with well, what he's doing right now. I'll be finding the shit out of him and he'll know it'll be public. You don't let guys get away with that type of thing. When you run the organization and stuff like that, so they can make the money, just put the rules in play. That's everybody, right. every everybody follows the same rules, and we good. I like the fact that money's like that. I don't, you know, but guys, the guys said, and then back to what you said, James. Hart, I don't know what it is. I think these agents, guys, need to evaluate their agents because I don't know what the hell. I don't know what the hell. You know, James, you know, I don't James. Know what, yeah, I don't even know where we come from now. Where the game is not a business first, right? The right. game is a business first, and we all four of us. I've been on the back end looking for a job and couldn't get in. And we remember when we fucking was in the prime of our career, we could do anything the fuck we want. So when they got the gun, they do not let up on you. They're going to shoot the shit out you and not pay you. We saw it happen to a lot of great players. Allen Iverson couldn't play no more. Guys that want to defense their career, look at Camelo Anthony. 
he had to damn near wait a whole fucking year and a half to get back into the league, man. Right. So right. you got to think about these things. These players don't think about that. So turning down money is still a business first. I don't know what, what kind of agents is going on right now that they tell these guys they can turn this kind of money down. It's crazy. I don't, I don't know what it is, but I mean, maybe the, maybe they just got enough money now. Shit, maybe they don't need it. So, like, when I look at it too, when you talk about the money and and you brought it up about you know Bird, Magic, and Jordan having the money, when I when you say that, I I compare that also to the maturity. Like, you think it was like it was grown men back in the day. So it it was a little it was different. They were mature and it was about business and feeding their family and things like that. Now you have you know younger talent younger kids now with all this money. And so shit, they really don't know how to act. Some, it's it's their first bag. And so now they think with the bag comes more power. So they don't know how to handle it for the most part. And so now they feel like they could do whatever they want. And the back what Etan said, like some of the owners in, in situations, they like shit, why give that kid that money? Ready? I want you to get the money, but if it's certain rules that come with it. So I think with the bag comes a certain rule, like you said, like, that's why I said down in Miami, you know, it was the league rules and it was the heat rules at the end of the day. So I think that should go on more so. And when you talk about these players and James Harden and we brought up Kyrie, you know, the effect that they have on their teammate, you know what I'm saying? And I just feel like I seen an uh, interview with uh, with uh, Cousins talk about the disrespect started, you know, with James Harden in, in training camp and stuff like that. So what y'all think about that? That's as, as if that's your teammate, how you feeling? Like he's not even in it. <sighs> trying to win nothing he's selfish at the end of the day and it's just a bad look for your teammates that you, you know what i'm saying like to say that about I mean, them and just say one they can't win and also to do what you want to do as as you know as, as you because you the man like i just feel a certain type of way about that i it, it's only it's only a couple guys that's in that category and, and i i like Harden. i think Harden's a great score one of the top scores to ever play the game but guys don't look at him like lebron james Guys don't look at him like KD. Mm. You know what I mean? Guys respect him because of the body of work he's done. But um, but he hasn't won the championship. He hasn't been in the Western Conference Finals. He hasn't been in the finals grinding right there at the moment. He hasn't been a good playoff player. So you think of Cousins, a guy who's, you know, already bitter because he's had some unfortunate bad luck. You think John Wall, who's bitter, who's still got a bag, who's made close to $300 million playing. You think he's studying James Harden if he don't want to play with him? You got to think about those guys. And then what about the guys that's been in there sweating the tears with you, the P.J. Tuckers of the right. world, the Eric Gordons, those guys that's been there with you every step of the way trying to win. How do you think they feel that you don't want to come back and play with right. them? Right, so, so, so do they say something? Like, at what point do, do, do the teammates say something man, about it? You know what I'm saying? Man, it, it happened last night. That's, when, that's why they knew they had to make the that's move. We wasn't there, but you saw Cousins come out. I guarantee you that thing went down in the locker room last night. <laughs> but, but no, no, it didn't go down in the locker room because James did it after the, he left out of the locker room and went. Oh, home. okay. Oh, See okay. So that went back to my previous point that this is why if they wouldn't have made the trade, he couldn't come back into the practice facility and then they, like they said, stay home because if you walk into the locker room, a real motherfucker go tell you something. Hey, man, say, man, all that slick talking and trying to talk down right. because. We ain't hearing that next thing you know, we hearing about some motherfuckers getting them paws put on. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. That was, I think, because we put it too. Yeah. I, I just don't, I just keep going back to how, you know, I don't <laughs> think this generation is any different than the one before that. I, I really don't. Like, I, when you can get away with it, you get away with it. I see, I played with guys and they got away with murder. You know what I mean? There's different rules for them. Like, we all knew it. They would do what they wanted to do. And it was all good as long as we were winning. Now, once we start losing, then it's like then it's different. But when you win it, man, they put up with anything, and that and that's yeah. that's on them. They can't get mad at Harden. I said this at the, at the beginning when they was talking about Harden was being late for practice and Harden was doing this and Harden was doing that. I'm like, y'all mad at the wrong people. What about the the, the GM, the, the the people in charge? That's their fault. You know what I mean? If you if yeah. you got we we got kids, if you let your kid have do whatever they want to do and have no rules and they act a fool, whose fault is that? That's your fault for letting them do whatever they want to do. I mean, that's that's how I look at it. You know, these these GMs and they gotta be held accountable, man. They they some punks, man. That's what it is. I mean, like just last year, and a lot of people really don't know this, but this is why Russ wanted to bounce. The Rockets didn't want to trade Russ 
he requested a trade because of all the things that was transpiring last year. You know, they would say say they would play on a Saturday and they wouldn't play again. You know, you had a, those couple of layoffs where you won't play again to to Thursday. Yeah, and James, James was on the private head in the combo on Tim and Fatina private at that. And, and Russ like, hold on, man, I ain't come here for all this shit. We used to come, you know, like Russ come from Oklahoma City. Oklahoma yeah. City is a notch under uh, the Miami yeah, Heat, if not on the yeah. same level for his culture, getting your work in, no shortcut. So Russ is sitting up here saying, hold on, James, what you doing? Like, I ain't with all this party. I came to the H 